Hello friends, welcome to SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we will see how to return a table from stored procedure. A procedure can also return a row and column of data. So, row and column of data in the sense it's a table. So, that's what we call it as a table, right? A table will have rows of data, and in each row, we may have columns. The return result can be used in the from class. That means we can uh, call the stored procedure and use that in the from class of the query because it's returning a table right the returned table can be used uh, in the from class or in the table joints the calling script can execute the procedure and iterate the result to perform business logic so that also can be done since the return here is a table right so once the table is returned the calling code can iterate through the returned result and perform some business logic so here the procedure name is sold more than so that's what uh, we are naming it the procedure name is sold more than and number of titles so that's what here we are passing and here is the body of the procedure and if you see here the parameter name is number of titles type is a small int and it's a input parameter since we doesn't specify any output keyword here so that's the default right inside the begin we have the select statement select before the select we will look at the from class to know what are all the tables involved sales table we are joining that with the stores table then the join candidate is a store id group by store name having here we are using the aggregate with the having class having count of sales dot quantity more than number of title that is incoming here as a parameter so this time we use the parameter in the having class and in the select list if you see we specify the store name then that's a one column right here we are writing a select statement we are not assigning any value to the internal variable or something here we are directly writing the select query that picks column one as a store name the second one is sales dot quantity so number of quantity and we call that as a total quantity right this aggregate we are calling it as quantity and here we are making the filter using the having class so if i call this procedure like sold more than 15 the procedure will list all the stores let's state store a b c d skipped e and total sales of book it will be uh, let's state 15 we told right here it is uh, 16 25 some random number i am picking but if you see all are more than passed in input parameter right here sold more than instead of count we can use sum that will be meaningful with this stored procedure name here we are not talking about the transaction here we are not talking about number of books sold or total quantity of books sold so sold more than and some we can use so 
here if you see execute sold more than three means uh, here we are using this as a transaction that means we are using count and number of count here we are checking that there will be more than three transaction but the procedure name here is uh, uh, not matching that's why uh, when we go to the code that time we will change this as a sum now let's go to the demo all right let's have this query it will be useful to test the result we'll go for a new query window and this will be our stored procedure and we changed count as sum here here also we will keep it as a sum so now we will create this stored procedure now we will execute this to create the stored procedure and let's right click refresh it and here we are saying number of titles so everything it is showing it as uh, returns an integer so forget this so here number of title that's what we are passing now we will execute the stored procedure sold more than we will check a count here if you see this is making sales less than 10 all right 10 okay this is making less than 100 this one is making more than 100 we will pick some books that is making so this uh, store also making more than 100 so sold more than 100 that's what i am picking here for the execution and uh, when i execute it you can see there are two stores that is making sales more than 125 to simply cross check this we will put sold more than one and we will see all the result and let's take some of the stores that is making sales more than 75 that means we need to see the result of this one two three these two should be skipped we should see four result now and when i execute i can see the four result and here if you see the execution of this stored procedure is actually retaining a table the content of table is uh, two column one is the store name and another one is total quantity and here it returns a four record and this is dynamic in nature by passing different parameter you will get the data right 120 7 it will give you only one right so this is returning a table surely yeah right one two book is skipped here all right that's all here in this uh, video we are ending this sub series of stored procedure now you know how to create a stored procedure how to pass parameter to the stored procedure when you are passing the parameter you know the role of input and output parameters then we know what is the use of return statement to return single value to the caller you can use the return statement and a stored procedure can also return a table to the caller when stored procedure returns value in terms of uh, output parameter or return statement the calling script will create a, or declare a variable and uh, collect the return statement or uh, the output variable into those variables 
all right watch those videos once again if you won't get and that's all here in this uh, sub series thank you for uh, watching bye